Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Trinity Reform United Church of Christ on this Mother's Day, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online and hope that you're truly fed by the worship of our God this day. In honor of our mothers, please hear this Mother's Day poem. My angel is a woman who walks upon the earth. She shows me my potential and all that I am worth. When I am sick, she heals me and makes me feel all better and makes sure that in times of need that we are all together. When we get into all kinds of fusses in our life, my angel comes out strong as a mother and a wife. My angel has raised me to be good and kind and make sure that I have a strong and intelligent mind. My angel is my guardian, my teacher, and my friend, but most of all, my mother till the very end. Happy Mother's Day to all our moms, and thank you for being there for us all. Tuesday is our consistory meeting at 6.30 p.m. in Jubilee Hall, uh, or of course on Zoom. Uh, you can use the same meeting ID and password that you would use for worship for, worship for the meeting. Uh, if you don't know the, 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 the meeting ID and password, just call the church office and we'll be able to provide that for you. All are welcome to attend, and I hope you do, as one of the things that we're going to be discussing is that thing right there, uh, that projector and the cost uh, to replace it, So, uh, and other, uh, other alternative ideas people have. So uh, something you may want to join in on Zoom or come down to the church, Jubilee Hall, 6.30 on Tuesday. During fellowship time today, we'll have a brief vision and mission committee meeting. Again, we're going to discuss that. Uh, we're also encouraging everyone to attend the meeting, uh, but that's crucial for our future. Your ideas and your input is greatly needed for our vision and mission committee as we move forward into a very vibrant future. Also, while you're in Jubilee Hall, take a look at how bright it is and check out the kitchen lights as well, because both rooms now have LED fixtures and lights in them, which will help cut our electric cost. And for those of who have, who have been at church at night, the outside lights have also been changed to LEDs and are now all working, especially the ones in the in, inside here going up the ramp. You'll actually be able to see going up the ramp. Um, so God said there will be light. Now there is. So thank you all for helping us with that. Uh, of course, you know, our new website is up and running. And for those online, you'll need to download the bulletin from our website at www.trinityreformeducc.org if you would like to follow along the service. For those <clears throat> who would like to support this ministry of live streaming, uh, along with our other ministries, you're encouraged to register on the new website in order to give online. Please let us know what you think of the new site, and additional items will, of course, be added as time goes on. Also, I ask each Sunday to please take a look at the whiteboard out in the narthex as we continue to need your assistance. There are new sign-up sheets for worship, worship assistance, grocery card sellers, and food sign-ups for each team sponsoring fellowship time. Please take a serious look at where you might be able or willing to help out. And today after service, we will be enjoying, of course, fellowship time after service, which is sponsored by the worship team. Uh, next Sunday, we will be offering our faith formation classes after service. On the back table are flyers and registration forms for our summer VBS or Vacation Bible School program that is we co-sponsor with the Presbyterian Church of Bloomsburg and the table, which is a Lutheran church on Main Street for July 24th through the 28th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. each day. This year, VBS will be held right here at Trinity for all three churches. So please let your friends, your grandchildren, and your neighbors know about this wonderful summer program. We are also actively collecting for the food pantry. Items can be left on the table in front of the crying room at the rear of the sanctuary. So please consider dropping off some non-perishable food items for those less fortunate than ourselves. And again, we are also collecting gently worn dress clothing and shoes for those who are going to court or for a job interview who do not have access to these important tools for success. And your donations have been greatly appreciated. 
Grocery cards continue to be on sale and cards will be on sale in Jubilee Hall after service, or you can call the church office for Weiser Giant cards. You can pick them up at the church or you can even have them delivered. This is an amazing fundraiser for the church and one that has helped us not only stay open, but allows us to continue our mission work in the community. So, <clears throat> however, the fund is has gotten extremely low. So if you haven't purchased cards recently, we really would appreciate if you was, uh, your support to resupply those funds for the church so we can use them when they are needed. And if anybody needs assistance or knows someone who might uh, need a phone call or visit, please let us know. The visitation team is ready to lift the spirits of those who need it. In fact, uh, those of you who are on the visitation team, I really would appreciate if you could get a hold of Dawn, please. Um, we're gonna start doing home communions, especially during the summer months. Uh, we're going to start doing home communions by the visit visitation teams. You'll have consecrated elements that we will send out uh, for you to visit. Uh, there is, uh, <clears throat> they have shown and there's been studies. The fact is that most of the uh, congregants who are homebound, they appreciate when other church members come out and visit them. And the reason for that is because they know the pastor gets paid to do that. But when you show up at their door and you give them communion or you provide a visit, it means so much more because you've taken time out of your day to visit them. So please, those of you on the visitation team or those of you who would like to join the visitation team, please see Don Hummel after service. And finally, as we prepare for service and for worship, let us empty our minds of anything that would distract us from realizing the presence of God's Holy Spirit during this time of worship. So let us now experience God's Spirit as we join together in the call to worship. Okay. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. The God of heaven and earth calls us together. We come to explore matters of the spirit. There is so much to do we do not know or understand. So much of God is unknown to us. Let us look carefully at the objects of our worship. Our intention is easily diverted from God. We want to worship the one who gives us breath. We reach for the reality beyond our knowing. In God, we live and move and have our being. All that we have and are comes from God. God is not limited to shrines made by us. God is everywhere present in the whole universe. Our opening hymn is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, page 66 in your hymnals and on wall and streets. Join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screen. 
Let the sound of praising you be heard among us today and in all the places of your dominion, O oh God. We believe you are present with us, even we cannot feel or see or hear you as we would like. We thank you for the times when you have caught our attention. We ask for one of those times today. Shake us out of our complacency and our cherished iniquities. Hold us in your steadfast love and call forth within us an awareness of all your blessings. Stimulate among us an eagerness to live as you instead. Amen. Please be seated. We have been baptized and claimed in the name of Jesus Christ for the lifetime of service. Yet we are often intimidated by our fears and seduced by our fantasies. We worship autonomy and deny community. We ignore the commandments God has given us. We need to face our guilt. God demands our repentance. So let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the wall and on your screens. Oh God, we confess that we have loved our own way more than we love you. The spirit of truth does not abide in us, for our actions belie the words of praise we utter in worship. We neglect the spiritual disciplines that would draw us close to you and the caring outreach that would link us with sisters and brothers who need to know if your love. We have not witnessed to our faith in was enough to evoke opposition or cause us to suffer. Oh God, it is hard to follow Jesus. Forgive us, teach us, help us. Amen. Let us confess our personal sins in silence, including those of the mess ups in the bulletin that your pastor made. Lord, hear our prayers. You are not left to struggle alone. You have an advocate who is always with you. You are not rejected. God hears your prayers and offers you steadfast love in all circumstances. Do not be afraid to hope and to share that hope with others around you. Claim God's gifts of reverence and gentleness as you testify to the resurrection. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? Please be seated. And children, you want to call on up? We lost one today. Oh, there he is. I was afraid you weren't here. All right. Hey, I like those new glasses. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I like them. I have to get, maybe I'll have to get some frames like that. All right, well, let me ask you these, these questions. These are pretty simple ones, okay? What do we need to do in order to take care of a dog or a cat or a pet of some kind? What do we have to do? We have to feed them, right? We have to make sure they have what? Water, right? What else do we have to do? Make sure they have shelter, right? If, if you have a dog, and you gotta have a leash, right? To take it on a walk. A cat, you've got to have what? A litter box and a scratching post. Yeah, you got to have one of them. If you have hamsters, what do you got to have? Yeah, one of those exercise wheels that go round, around, around. That's right. And some pets need brushes, right? They need brushes to, to keep their hair from getting all matted and, and ugly and stuff. And some animals need medicines, don't they? Yeah, some, some animals have to give medicines every day or, or vitamins to keep them healthy. 
What's that? That's right. Reptiles need calcium. And some reptiles need a special light, don't they? Yeah, they need ultraviolet light. That's right. Now, if you don't, if we don't give our, our pets food or water or exercise and medis, medical care uh, when, they're, when they're sick, are we showing them that we love them? No, we're not, are we? No. You see, when we love something, we care for them, right? Yeah. We show our love through our actions. And Jesus said that if, you, if we love him, we will follow his commandments. Now, his commandment was to do what? What was his commandment? To love who? Love God and, and your neighbor. That's right. To love God and love your neighbor. But how do we show, how do we show our love for God? What, what are we doing today? Yeah, we come to church, right? And on the other, uh, other, now today we have fellowship time, but on the other Sundays we have what? Sunday school, right? Yeah, all right, Sunday school. That's exactly. And, and, we, and we do our Bible studies like we're doing right now, and we follow God's commandments to confess our sins. We confess the mistakes we made, and then God is, will forgive us for, our, for what we do wrong. Now, how do we show our love for neighbors? How do we show our love for neighbors? What, do we, what can we do? Yeah, we can help them out. We can care for them if they're sick. We can help them out maybe during the winter, shoveling sidewalks for them. Or, or if there's some who are getting like friends of ours on the schoolyard, we can stand up for them if they're getting bullied, right? That's right, we can stand up for them. Yeah, we show our love through our actions by learning Jesus' commandments to do what is right. Just like we show our love for our pets by doing the things that keep them healthy and happy, we need to show love for our God and our neighbor through our actions of love. Okay? And that's my challenge for you this week. I want you to show God and your neighbor that you love them by following Jesus' commandments through your actions. We can admit in God in prayer that we make mistakes and receive God's commitment, and then we can love others by caring and helping them. So you think you can do all those things? Yeah? I bet you can. Let's pray. Holy God, we come to you with love in our hearts. Help us to use this love to help others and follow your commandments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Our epistle lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul took time to understand the people to whom he witnessed. He was able to use their culture and ideas as starting points for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, beginning in verse 22. Then Paul stood in front of, of the Arachipus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he is, has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends our first reading. 
Her gospel lesson is from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Here, Jesus promises that God's people will never be abandoned. Those who follow the way of Christ will be given the gift of God's presence through the Holy Spirit, beginning in verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be, give, he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, fill us with your spirit that we might follow your commandments to love as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tom had won a toy at a raffle. He called his five kids together to ask them which one should have the present. Who is the most obedient, he asked. The children all stared back at him in silence. He then asked, well, who never talks back to mother? Again, the, ki the kids appeared to be mystified by the question. Then Tom asked, who does, every who does everything she says? With that, the kids finally were able to come up with a conclusion. The five small voices answered in unison, okay, dad, you get the toy. You know the old saying, right? Happy wife, happy life. Well, Jesus knows a little bit about happiness in life. He knows that when we follow his teachings, respect his authority, and honor the one who sent him, we too can know happiness and contentment, even in the most difficult of times. Our passage today is of the farewell discourse in the Gospel of John that we talked about last Sunday. In the farewell discourse, Jesus is saying goodbye and giving his disciples his final instructions to them. This overarching theme is loving, of, is loving one another, giving one's own self for the sake of others, and keeping Jesus' commandments. Now, Jesus also seems to have a very specific commandment in mind. In chapter 13, Jesus says he is giving a new commandment, and that new commandment is to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. Now in our passage today, he brings this home by telling the disciples that if they truly love him, then they will keep his commandment, especially this new one. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was all about loving others and giving up one's self for the sake of others. And more importantly, it was about loving God. So if you love God, or in this case, God incarnate, that of Jesus the Christ, then you will keep God's commandments, both the Father's and the Son's. Jesus draws a strong connection in every direction between these ideas of God, love, obedience, and community. Obedience is the hard one for most of us, is the hardest one for most of us, especially growing up. The, uh, there's a hymn called Trust and Obey, and whenever it's suggested for a particular scripture that we are using, I always tell Rachel and Colleen that that's one hymn that is the one I don't like to sing. And because it reminds me that I am, I'm not a fan of obedience because that means I've got to follow someone else's rules and not my own arrogant wisdom. Now, are, are you like that too? Where, where someone else's rules don't always set really well with you? Well, a lot of us are, if we're honest about it. 
In fact, we saw a lot of people, including our legislators, not happy about Governor Wolf's rules during the pandemic. We didn't want to be locked in our homes anymore. We didn't want to wear masks or stand six feet apart. We didn't want to go back to work, and, or we wanted to go back to work and, and eat out again in a restaurant. And even though these rules were designed to save lives, a lot of people felt the rules went too far, went too long, that our suffering was just too much to handle. Isn't that exactly what Christ is telling the disciples today? If you love me, if you love God, the creator of your life, then you will follow my rules, my commandments, even if it's uncomfortable. And the rule he speaks about is that you will love your God and love your neighbor. Even those neighbors who are different from you, even those neighbors that really upset you and make you mad, even those neighbors who hurt you, persecute you, and revile you. Yes, those neighbors you must love as well. And Christ knew that humanity could not do that on their own. They needed to know that the Holy Spirit was with them. In fact, because the Holy Spirit indwells humanity, so does the Father and the Son as well. You have to remember, God is one in three. Three in one. The Godhead indwells us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. And you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And therefore, we have the same power Christ had when he lived on this earth. It's ours to use in love, to use it to help our neighbor, to use it to help humanity, to use it to help this church, to follow Christ's commandments. There are those who have never sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus or God, in their midst. These are the people who do not know God who don't realize they have a God within them, in every cell of their body. And there are those who know God, sense God, and uses God's, Holy, God's love for others, God's Holy Spirit. These are the people we saw running toward the dangers of the pandemic. These are the people who kept working in all sorts of essential businesses, knowing they could be exposed. These are the faithful, like you and I, who prayed for others throughout the pandemic and did whatever we could do to help our neighbor. Making masks, calling friends and family of faith on the phone, checking in with those whose families weren't close by. You see the connection? How God's commandments and Jesus' commandments were put to work in the front lines of the pandemic? Do you see how we're able to love because of God's love for us and the power God gives us to do so? Even in the worst circumstances, a worldwide pandemic where millions of people died. Do you see how the church, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, along with their teachings and commandments, were very relevant during the pandemic? This is why we need church. This is why we need God. This is why we need Jesus Christ and the indwelling Holy Spirit in our daily lives today. This is what it means to love your God and to love your neighbor. To obey God's commandments and show your love for Jesus the Christ. And our scripture lesson today lets us know that we have this wonderful power as a gift from God. Now all we have to do is use it. Like Andrea Pian, who's a 33-year-old college counselor at a high school in San Francisco, California, and was working remotely during most of the pandemic. She met with her students using Google Hangouts, but anticipating fewer meetings during a particular part of the school year, as a salaried worker, she didn't expect to be missing any paychecks. And as someone who enjoys inherited wealth from her father's success in the bio biotech industry, she believes it's important to give back, especially when times are tough. On one Sunday during the pandemic, she posted the following message on Nextdoor. Hi, neighbors. If you'll be missing a paycheck, 
contract work, or if money is tight for food and supplies, message me and I will send you $20. No questions asked. Part of being a good ally is supporting my neighbors who maybe don't have the same privileges I do, she told the Reader's Digest. So far, she's given away about $400 to her neighbors and anticipates more as the pandemic drew on. She started, a face, she started on a Facebook, but quickly realized that many of her Facebook friends were people she grew up with and were former classmates who already had resources. So she posted on next door, where her neighbors are her network, and many of them are people who don't get a regular paycheck or have much money. Many people are contracted workers, or work in restaurants, or the service industry, or bars and stuff, and their hours had all been cut. There were a couple of students whose work-study hours had been cut, she said, of the people reaching out to take, up, take her up on her offer. With all the hysteria around the coronavirus, there was an inclination to feel a lot of scarcity. That resulted in an awful lot of hoarding. But there, is an all, but there is also a way to look at it from a perspective of generosity. And that's why I posted on Nextdoor, she explained, because we should be thinking about how we can be in solidarity with poor and working class people who are at risk of being evicted, were uninsured and could not afford adequate medical care or even able to feed their families. Andrea Pan loved her neighbors and used the power of the Holy Spirit to follow Christ's commandment to do so. And while the pandemic is over, inflation and economic uncertainty continue for an awful lot of families out there. So while there's not a lot of us who have inherited wealth, we do what we, we can to help others by utilizing the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because we know, we know if you love Jesus and use the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will follow his commandments to love God and your neighbor. Amen. Let us continue our service with our hymn of response, Spirit Song number 352 in the hymnal on the wall and on your screens.
be seated. <clears throat> this is the time of our service. We want to remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, or on your coffee table. Anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that's had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with asking that you keep the family of Jack Mahalik in your prayers. Jack passed away this week and was a law partner of my father, Cleve Hummel. Prayers for comfort, peace, and God's gentle embrace for the family is definitely needed. Please also keep the family of Lois Kroom in your prayers. Lois was a friend of the Hummel family and known to many as an exceptional disciple of Christ and civic volunteer. Prayers again for comfort, peace, and God's gentle embrace for Lois's family. Connie and Don Pegg are asking for prayers for Connie's mother, Jean, for continued healing after a bout of pneumonia and a hospital stay. Jean is home resting comfortably now, but could certainly use our prayers. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys and concerns through email, text, or phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. Now, let us pray. Abiding God, who does not leave us orphaned, Reclaim us now as we experience the scriptures that we might renew our commitment and be empowered for faithful service. Use our hands to do the work you've called us to do. Use our hands to do the work that you have called us to help build our community. Use our witness to overcome ignorance of our way of love for all people. As today, we ask mindfully that you, watch, that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those in our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now, in a moment of silence, we ask that you to hear those prayers that are simply too private to speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our spiritual ancestors brought sacrifices as offerings to God. We are invited to join them in bringing our best to proclaim God's rule over all things. God claims our labors and the fruit of our, of our labors. In response, we offer them gladly. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their offerings in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary. Join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and on your screens. God has listened to our prayers and abides with us. God's blessing rests on us as we scatter to serve. The spirit lives within us and among us. We seek to live as a resurrection people. Daily, God will add to your understanding if you ask. Do not fear to seek after the truth God will reveal. Every day can be an adventure in faith. All our encounters can link us more closely with God. Our creator draws us into community. Our spiritual journey is linked to others' stories. Together, we will seek to know God more fully. We will remember one another in prayer. Amen.
to now hear this pastoral benediction. What wonderful news we've heard this morning. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit to protect us, nurture us, and guide us through all the joys and sorrows of life. We can use this power of love to help ourselves and others as well. I've said it many times, as long as we are doing the work of love that God intends us to do here at Trinity, we will be here for a long, long time. Let us use this power to keep our church going, to keep the energy flowing, to keep us working together for, the, for God's love to be spread throughout our community and throughout our community of faith. May you use the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and be transformed by it to love, to care for, and to help those around you and around the world in ways you never thought possible. Amen. Let us conclude our service today with our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. 517 in the hymnal, on the wall and on your screens. directly to Jubilee Hall and look at the lights.